Hi friends, welcome on board for another project. This time I decided to design this AC to DC flyback converter. It is a beginner's friendly board because I have used minimum possible components in quantity and all of the components are through hole. So if this is your first experience to build such circuits, just follow and build your own first AC to DC converter board. The input is 85 to 260 volts AC and the output is 12 volts 500 milliamps continuously. Let me mention that you can download this project, this PCB project for free from my Altium 365 cloud space. First, just follow this link and register on the website. Then follow this link and download the project for free. So let me explain the board. This connector is the main AC input, as I said, in the range of 85 to 260 volts AC. This is the fuse. Really, I couldn't remove the fuse because fuse is mandatory for safety reasons and I suggest don't remove this fuse for saving a few cents in the final product. This big boy is the uh, main capacitor for ripple reduction after this bridge rectifier, this small bridge rectifier. These three components belong to the snubber circuit. Uh, you don't need to use a one watt resistor like mine. A half watt resistor is fine here because I just had this capacitor in my component storage. That's why I use this big one watt resistor. This is the controller chip. Here is the uh, capacitor for the uh, supply rail of the controller chip, to, to controller chip to reduce the ripple. Here is the optocoupler to sense the output voltage and to adjust the PWM pulse of the primary to adjust the output voltage according to the changes of the output voltage. And here is the transformer and the transformer is RM6. I really like these type of transformers because they are efficient and low EMI. All of the circuits that I built using these transform transformers, this type of ferrite core and this type of transformer, I'm pretty happy with the results. They are better than EE core and EI or ER cores. So this Schottky diode for rectific rectification and these two capacitors for output noise reduction and this Zener, Zener diode to fix the output voltage on 12. Let's go to the back side. So these three isolation gaps is to follow the high voltage IPC standards. Uh, don't forget to follow the same thing in your circuits and uh, nothing special except for these ground planes to reduce the noise and reduce the impedance of the ground path. So let's go to the next step and explain the schematic and PCB. So here is my Altium 365 cloud space where I have uploaded these three PCB projects so far and the rest, these ones, belong to the Altium itself as a sample or tutorial to show you how this thing works. Let me show you my space. So I have created this my monitor here and I have uploaded these three projects so far. You can download all of these projects for free. Just follow this link in my YouTube video description and register on the Altium 365 website. Then follow this link and download the project files for free and you don't need to purchase the license for this purpose. So this is the five files, schematic document, PCB layout, if the 3D view pops up, yes, and bill of materials. Let me explain the schematic. Here is the input terminal, AC input, fuse, bridge rectifier, and desk capacitor for ripple reduction. And this DC line is the main DC line of the input after, I mean after the bridge rectifier. And as you can see, the software highlighted the, the PCB net automatically. It is it's a good feature for uh, explaining the schematic, for example, to the colleagues. 
these three components belong to the snubber circuit, the transformer, an RM6 transformer, and this is the switching regulator, and that optocoupler provide a galvanically isolated uh, voltage sensing pass path for the controller to sense the output voltage and adjust the PWM duty, duty cycle at the primary of the transformer. The Zener, di Zener diode for output regulation and these two capacitors for output noise reduction, this Schottky diode for uh, as a rectifier, and this LED shows that the output voltage is at, at the correct level. And this is the output terminal or the output uh, XH connector, and this uh, comment is wrong, as actually it is my mistake, it is 12 volts and 500 milliamps. Let's go to the PCB. So it is a two layer PCB board. You can see the input. So I have used the, only the bottom layer at the input. You can see the three isolation gaps here to follow the IPC standards and the output. And here, if I show you the layers, you can turn on and off the layers here. So this is just the bottom layer. You can see the bottom layer at the input and output. So if you cut the board from here, because these two sides of the board are totally isolated. So you, you can divide the board from here. This is the output and this is the input. And this is just the top layer or top overlay. You can see this is just the overlay. Okay, I think I covered most of the points for this project and this is the 3D view of the board in the Altium 365 space. Uh, I think I covered most of the point and uh, as I said in the beginning of the video, these two polygons at the top and bottom layers, I mean this one and this one, are to reduce the noise and reduce the impedance of the ground path and these wires are for this purpose are to reduce the impedance and length of the ground path and the benefit is uh, lower EMI and lower noise at the output okay so let's go to the next step and test the board using laboratory equipment All right, I have prepared this test setup using this Siglent SDL1020 DC load, the Siglent SDS2102X 21, plus oscilloscope, and this Vevor thermal imaging camera to see the thermal stress on the components, and the model is SC240M. There is an opportunity to buy this product with some discount, so follow this link in my YouTube video description and enter the discount code that allows you to buy this product with a lower price. So I will perform three tests. First, I will check the thermal stress on the components. Then I will check the output voltage stability using this DC load. And I will check the output voltage noise and also the waveform on the premier of the transformer using this oscilloscope. So the, for the first test, here is my thermal imaging camera, the Vevor. I'm not sure if you can see what I see. If you press this button, it saves a picture, uh, actually uh, a picture of what you see on the screen, on the screen of this device. So look at these two images. These two images shows the stress on the components on the worst condition. So the thermal stress on the out output Schottky diode, on the controller chip, and also on the resistor of the snubber. It gives you a valuable information to see how your product, product will work in the long run. And also you can uh, find faulty components and bad components using this thermal imaging camera because bad components always draw current and gets very hot. So for the second test, let me connect the 
input of the DC load to the output of the power supply and see that output voltage. So let me turn off the, uh, the, uh, turn off the current and this voltage is the output voltage of the power supply without any load. So the output voltage without any load is around 11.8 volts. These wires uh, will introduce some voltage drop, but it's, it's, it's a very low and I didn't use the second uh, voltage sense using these two wires. So you can uh, forget about that, uh, that much of tolerance because that tolerance is very low. Anyway, now I enable the output current, 500 milliamps, and this is the output voltage drop under the maximum load, which is 500 milliamps. So the voltage drop is around 40 millivolts, which is very good for a power supply that uses a zener doubt at the output. So it's, uh, it's quite accept acceptable for this kind of power supply. For the next test, I will move the camera and just focus on the oscilloscope screen to show you the, what's going on with this device. Both at the output, I mean the output noise, and also the waveform on the premiere of the transformer. But I should remind you that I have connected, the, connected this device to, the, to an isolation transformer. Otherwise, you cannot connect the oscilloscope probe directly on the premiere because bang, you will kill your device or you will kill everything here. I think you know the reason uh, because this device is the main earth reference and you will uh, kill either your device or the, your oscilloscope, be careful. And again, this board has been connected to an isolation transformer. That's why I can connect the probe to the input. So let's go and I will focus on the oscilloscope screen. So look at the voltage on the premiere of the transformer. You can see the effect of the snubber. You see this edge? This edge is properly softened, even more than enough. And oscilloscope says the peak-to-peak -peak voltage of, of the whole of this waveform is just around 400 volts. So this is a, I can say, a perfect waveform for the premiere of a flyback. Let me play with the times division. And there we go. This is a better view of the premiere and the PWM pulse on the premiere of the transformer. Here, without, the, without any snubber, you should see some long spikes on this edge of the pulse, which might damage the MOSFET of the controller chip. So the next test would be uh, the output noise checking. So now I'm gonna measure the output noise under the maximum load, which is 500 milliamps. You should prepare the probe like this, put a ground spring on the tip, and put the probe directly on the output connector. And there we go, this is the output noise of the power supply, around 60 millivolts peak to peak, and around let's say 8 or 9 millivolts RMS. So that's it for this project. We will do something else in the next video.